welcome everyone to this webinar on Azure Data Studio. My name is Lori Upabi, and I'm a consultant here at BI Tracks. BI Tracks is an IT firm that specializes in business intelligence. Um, more specifically, we build data warehouses and also um, reporting solutions um, that hit those data warehouses. And we're doing a webinar series on Azure Data Studio. Today, we're going to be talking about the differences between um, files, folders, and workspaces. Um, we'll talk a little bit about VS Code and also um, GitHub and how you can integrate all of those things. So to start off, um, I'm going to talk about the difference between files, folders, and workspaces in Azure Data Studio. Um, the, at the file level, it, it's very similar to Management Studio, where you can open a file, you can edit it and save it. Um, so let me just show you an example of that. Um, I have this connection right here to one of my servers, and I'm just going to um, do a select top 1000 to um, create a query file. Um, and so I can go to file and I can click save. And I can save this SQL query. Um, and I can open multiple files that way. I can also work at the folder level, which would then um, show me all of the files within a folder. Um, regardless of what type of file it is, you can have a, a text file, you can have an image, um, you can have a, a SQL query. And to do that, I'm going to go up to file and click open folder. And I'm going to choose a folder that I have. And then I'm going to navigate down to this Explorer icon, which is going to show me what I'm looking at. And you'll see here's the folder name, and it's got all of the contents um, in that folder. So I can move from file to file within the folder. Um, and you'll see it will open up whatever type of um, file that you have, whether it be an image or this one is a Jupyter notebook. Um, and the, the next level of that is, is workspaces. So if, if I had two um, projects um, as two different folders and I wanted to move between both of them, I could create a workspace to do that. Um, because if right now, if I go and I open a folder again, like I just did, it's going to, I'll choose a different folder this time. It's going to reload this screen and I'll only be able to see that one particular folder. Um, so what I'm going to do is show you how to create a workspace. Um, go to file and you click add folder to workspace. And then you will choose um, a different folder and click add. And you'll see that now I have both of those folders within um, my Explorer and I can navigate between the two. You'll see that it says untitled up here. So if you wanted to name that workspace, you just go to file, save workspace as, and we will call this ADS and click save. And then you'll see now at the top it's titled ADS workspace. And I can navigate between those two folders. Um, so now I'm going to move on to VS Code and how you can integrate that. 
Um, you can also open this workspace with Visual Studio Code. Let me launch VS Code. And from this window, you just go to File, um, Open Workspace. And then you can choose that workspace that I created, the ADS workspace. I'm going to click Open. And I can open that in here as well. Um, one of the reasons that you might want to do that um, is there are certain capabilities that you have in Visual Studio Code that you don't have in Azure Data Studio. Um, one example of that is um, running a Python script within the editor. So let me open this Python script that I have. Um, you'll see in Azure Data Studio, here's, here's my Python script, but I don't have a button to execute that. Um, now I could use the, um, the terminal, the built-in terminal window in Azure Data Studio to kick off a, um, a Python script, but I can't run it within this editor. Um, but if I go back over to VS Code, and I'm gonna click on that same script, you'll see that it has this green um, arrow up here, that, which, will run, which will run that file and you'll see the results underneath of it. Um, that's not the same for um, every file in PowerShell, you can, you can run both um, a PowerShell script in Azure Data Studio and VS Code. Let me make sure I have um, my PowerShell script in this workspace so I can show you what I mean. There we go. Um, so this is just a PowerShell script to um, get the version of PowerShell that's running. And so you just hit the execute button and it will show you the results um, down here. And it does the same thing in VS Code. And hit run. Oh. Looks like I'm getting some sort of error. I probably have to debug something, but you can run PowerShell in both um, VS Code and Azure Data Studio. Um, so the last thing I'm gonna talk about is, um, oh, I was hitting the wrong button. <laughs> so if you hit that arrow, it runs it, you can see the version um, under there. The next thing I'm going to talk about is um, how to integrate this with GitHub so you can um, share your project with um, other users and make modifications and commit changes um, to the project. So I'm going to start out in GitHub. Um, and I'm, I'm logged in, so I'm just going to start by creating a repository. I'm gonna click new and call this project. You can choose for it to be public or private. Um, and then you can also um, add a readme file. So it does that automatically. I'm gonna hit create repository. And so now I've created my repository in GitHub. Um, and I'm going to integrate this with Azure Data Studio. And the first thing I'm going to do is come out to this code button. And right here, this is going to copy um, the URL that I need um, and go back to Azure Data Studio. And you'll want to hit F1. And it brings up git clone for me because I've recently used it. But if it's not there, you want to just type in git clone and you'll see it appear. So I'm going to choose git clone and paste in that 
repository URL and hit enter. Now it's going to want me to create a, um, a repository location. So I'm just going to create a new folder and call it get. And I'm going to hit select repository location and ask me if I want to open that repository. So I'm going to hit open. Um, and you'll see from the Explorer window, I've got my project and I've got the readme file that it that it created from GitHub. So say I wanted to add some files to this project. Let me go out to here and grab some files. I'm going to copy it and paste it into um, this repository over here. And you'll see when I do that, it updates that in um, Azure Data Studio. And you'll see down here at your source control icon, it's showing me that I have seven pending changes. So from this screen, I'm going to enter in um, a commit message. So added files. And then you just hit control enter. And that's going to commit the changes. Once it does that, down all the way at the bottom, you'll see how it has a one and an arrow pointing up. Um, that's telling you you have changes that need to be synced to the repository. So I'm going to click on that. It's going to ask me if I want to push that. I'm going to hit OK. And you'll see that line going across the top. That is loading that. And now if I go back to GitHub, I'm going to refresh. And you can see all of the. Um, the files that I added to this repository. So if you have any um, if you have any questions, please um, feel free to put that in the chat window. Um, this this webinar will be recorded. Um, you'll receive it in your email, and it'll also be available on YouTube. And you'll also receive um, a free copy of um, the book, the hands-on Azure Data Studio. Um, so I'll give a few more minutes to see if anybody has any questions. Is there a way to, okay, so the question is, is there a way to open a second file editor without opening on the side? Um, I don't know. I necessarily understand that question. You could, you could open two copies of Azure Data Studio. So you could, do you want to unmute yourself? And, um, not opening on the side. So I guess, yes, you could have you. Oh, I think I understand. Sorry. Um, if you open one file, if you just go to file, open file. When you open a second file, it replaces the tab. File, open file. So if I'm understanding you correctly, um, it sounds like you're saying that it replaces the tab um, when you open a second file, but I actually don't, I'm not experiencing that. If I just go to file, open file, and I choose a file when I already have some open, it actually opens up another tab. I, I think, uh, Lori, it depends on the type of file uh, that's being opened. Uh, and I believe that, I, I, I'm not sure, what type of file it, it is. I've seen this behavior before. Mm -hmm. uh, I think if you if you click in it and make a 
any kind of change, I think it then becomes sticky and won't replace it. Um, but yeah, I, I've seen that behavior. Uh, before so you think well. maybe it's okay. Because what I was just saying before is I was opening different types of files. So let me do this. Let me create a new file. Um, um, let me create another query and see if it replaces. Save as. But yeah, just close those two and then open them and, and see okay. what the behavior okay. is. Okay. Right, because I thought it acted the same way as Management Studio. Okay, I opened that SQL query, query and now I'm going to open another file and select the other one and hit open. Yeah, for me, it opens it in another tab. Yeah. This time, Lori, go ahead and close the close them again. Okay. <laughs> and this time, open them them up from the file. So if you go to the, the activity bar, that's that black vertical. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Click on that. Now <clears throat> try to open them. Do the same thing. Okay. All right. So that that's okay. The that would be the, the difference to. then oh. is opening <laughs> it from the explorer is going to replace it, which. It looks like it'll do that regardless of the type of file. But if you go up to right, but if, file, if, if you make a change to it, or if you were like click in, just push, make a space or something. Oh, okay. And now open up the other one. Oh, okay. So I, that okay. may be a feature, but, right. but you did stumble across a workaround, which is going file open. It's not as convenient as using the activity bar right. and selecting it that way. So the only other workaround would be just to make an innocuous change. Right. Okay. <clears throat> yeah. Now everything is clear. Thank you for the question. <laughs> I'm glad. I'm glad we ended up there. <laughs> All right. It doesn't look like um, any other questions are coming up. So like I said already, um, this will be recorded and it will be in your email. Um, feel free to reach out to us at info at bitracks.com if you have any questions.